So when I'm out on the road training, I love nothing more than to take my full PicoScope automotive kit with me. However, sometimes on um, like an electrical training course, all I want to do is show someone some pulse width modulation or something simple and quick. So getting all this out of the box, setting it all up can be a bit overkill for, for what we want to do. So I've been on the hunt for a small handheld uh, oscilloscope that's just nice and convenient. I can quickly get out, set up and show people what we were looking at. For example, the pulse width modulation signal or the Limbus signal uh, and nothing more. So what I did is I picked up one of these. This is the O1 HDS 272S. And there are a few different um, specifications of this handheld scope. This was the one I went for. It seemed to be the best kind of specification for what I wanted for the most reasonable price. So this was around about £150 and I paid for this out of my own pocket. Okay, so we'll give it a go on the bench with the uh, snap-on waveform demonstrator before going onto the car to see what it's like with uh, real signals. Um, what I've done is I've connected that up to channel one. We'll also get channel two going in a minute, remembering that that's the signal generator. Um, if we just turn the oscilloscope on here, call it an oscilloscope, um, just quickly show you the other features this has got. We've got that mode button there, okay? Now this is the uh, multimeter mode and what was really quite impressive about this is that it went down four decimal places, okay? So a good multimeter goes down kind of three. Um, in fact, if we go to the millivolt setting, we can see that it goes down to two decimal places on the millivolts. So my Mac multimeter only goes down to one decimal place, look, okay? So really suitable for doing the fuse volt drop method on battery drain testing. So go and check out that battery drain testing video um, with those tips if you've not seen that already. So if we just hit mode again, it goes to the um, signal generator. Again, the voltages don't really hit high enough to be really useful for automotive testing. However, that's not to say that it's completely useless. You could use it on a an inductive kind of speed sensor with an AC kind of sine wave. But again, it's, it's not something I would buy this for. Um, hit mode again, it takes us to the oscilloscope. So we're already switched on there now and we can see that it's already picked something up. So we're on five volt scale. So if we press uh, channel one, okay, channel one, channel two, that brings this up and it said this way for the voltage scale. See, now we're going down and we want to go up. So now we're on a 10 volt scale. 10 volt scale there should be enough. Now we can see this thing flicking past. Let's um, go to the trigger and let's bring that trigger level down. We can see that's quite high up at the minute. Okay, there we are. So now we've put the trigger on it. It's held that pattern still. So what we've got is a, it's, it should be a square wave signal. So we're kind of zoomed into it at the minute. So what we want to do is, is set that horizontal time base. So we hit that button there, horizontal. And then that brings up horizontal position and time base. Don't move the horizontal position because that moves the trigger. Okay, you see that little T there? That there is our trigger point and we want that to stay in the middle because if you start playing with that, you can end up with the trigger point off the screen and then you end up with like weird patterns. You get a similar problem on hand tech oscilloscopes. So leave that alone. So if we click horizontal, we want time base, which is up and down. So if we start clicking the time base up, can now see that we've got that square wave image so pulse width modulation and that's exactly what I've been using this to demonstrate on electrical training courses so it's just really easy for me to pack in the car take with me and quickly get it out just to show people what I mean so I'll just bring that in a little bit closer for you so pretty good image uh, what we can do with this as well is change the frequency. So that is on the, the highest frequency there. Let's have a look at the oscilloscope features in more detail. So this is your, your normal kind of square wave image. Let's move over to a injector, which we've got here. Okay, so we've gone on to the injector pattern. 
and we can see there that we've gone off the screen so to get back to the voltage settings we need to go to um, channel 1 channel 2 select that we're on the channel 1 settings because we can see that there okay if you press it again it goes to channel 2 settings okay so we want channel 1 remembering that these function buttons then align with whatever's next to them so we're on channel 1 and it was uh, up and down so that so no that's the vertical position left and right is the voltage scale so if we go left it increases the voltage scale and there we are look we've got an injector image on the screen we've lost the trigger point there so if we just hit uh, trigger at the bottom and then we can move the trigger level up and you can just see that yellow line on the side there that indicates your trigger level that's your trigger position so at the minute it's in the middle so what we could do is reduce the time a bit to look at that in a bit more detail so time base is up and down okay not a bad waveform what do you think okay so i'm just going to connect into channel two or channel b it's channel two on this one channel one and two um, I don't know where I've put the other lead, so this is the one that came with the uh, Think Tool oscilloscope. And we'll go for camshaft and crankshaft, I think. So we'll put that one onto the camshaft, and we'll put this one, channel 2, onto the crankshaft. Okay, so camshaft signal now. You can see we were on like 50 volts, 100 volts for that injector signal, so we need to reduce that voltage scale let's go to channel one and voltage scale we need to bring it down so that was right let's go for the 20 volt scale because we'll be able to fit the crankshaft above it then um, we will bring that trigger level down although the trigger is probably not going to be so useful for this it will help us get that time setting sorted there we are okay so let's hold it still now go to horizontal and then we want to go up and down for time base, so up in this case. That's one of the, the trickiest things, is getting the up and, up and the down and the left and right um, the right way around. Okay, so there we are, we've got a camshaft signal there. Um, we now need to turn on channel 2, so if we hit that button there for channel 1 and 2, we'll hit it again, now we're on channel 2, switch on. Okay, there's a crankshaft signal, so what we can see there is actually just come up with quite a, a block of blue. Remember that the time scale is for the whole scope, so we can't set a separate time scale. So what we'll do, look, is if we reduce that time base, we can then see that in a bit more detail. So what I would say is that the reason it looks like this on the higher time scale is because the screen is so small. I don't think the scope's not capable of picking it up. It's just that when, when it displays it, we end up with you know those lines that come quite close together. Whereas if we reduce that time base, it now starts to appear. Reduce it down again. So you see, you can see the signal. It's just not the best, okay? So probably could be a bit difficult for doing camshaft and crankshaft correlation. You could count the teeth okay so you could reduce that time base a little bit more and potentially if we pause it at the right time you could go and count the teeth between the marks okay but again you would need a known good reference okay which i don't know where you would get that from for this you know you, you could probably look at one online but for me, that, that's not what this tool is for. You would get the PC oscilloscope out for that, the laptop oscilloscope, or something more capable. This is just for quick test going on. Yes, I've got a crankshaft signal. Yes, I've got a camshaft signal. So we'll get on the car now where we'll put it through its paces on some real signals. Um, what we'll finish with is a bit of canvas to see how it's going to handle that. That's always the question on everyone's mind. Um, we'll take a look at a real crankshaft sensor signal to see if it behaves the same as the demo and maybe have a look at some uh, ignition as well to see if it will pick up um, ignition diagnostics. However, I'm quite happy that it picks up those square wave signals, so um, I'm not going to try it on anything like that. A bit boring.
Okay, so I've just put the uh, longer Pico Scope leads on here because those short ones are just not going to be very suitable for what I want to do right now. Okay, so we'll just put a ground on here and I'm pretty sure, I've been doing this a few times recently, that that there is our crankshaft sensor signal. So we can see there that it's picked up that signal, okay. Let's just um, increase the voltage scale a little bit. So I think I'm already on voltage, there we go, okay. Um, now remember on the other one, the time base, as soon as we went up the time base a bit, it just turned to a block. There we are, it, we've got the same. So we can't really go up really high time bases with this. However, this here, it works just fine. It might be partly down to the fact that we can't trigger to this signal properly and we've got that other bit moving across there, but you know, I'm just guessing here. It's, it's, not, um, it's not the best, but for checking the signal, perfect. Okay, so let's give it a go on some ignition diagnostics. I've already put this ignition coil extension on there for the coil unplug, so we'll just clamp that on there, put that on the ground and then connect this up to channel two. So we're not gonna need an attenuator on this because believe it or not, the voltage that comes out of here is very, very low. Um, what it will do is give us a relative voltage and it's generally one volt equals 10 kilovolts. So one volt in equals 10 kilovolts at the spark plug or the coil. So we want to turn on channel two press it again to go to channel two, turn that on. Um, got nothing on there at the minute. Remember this is gonna be a very low voltage. So what we want to do is reduce that voltage scale all the way down. Now we can see something there, see it? Wow. And now we want to change the trigger to channel B, don't we? I've not done that yet. So let's press that. We want to, ah yeah, trigger source look. So when you press trigger, we go to trigger source, channel two. There it is. So it's actually done a pretty good job at picking that up. Let's just turn channel one off. So, sorry, press channel one, switch it off. There we are. Let's reduce that time a bit more and see how much detail we've got in there. Wow, pretty good. So it is inverted and that's quite normal. <laughs> you could just flip the oscilloscope up this way around, although you are reading it backwards now. So that is primary and that's uh, secondary or um, burn line, should I say. Um, but that is a pretty good signal there. I mean, looking at the curves on this waveform, you might even say that it was uh, possibly a 12 bit scope. Pretty impressive. Okay, something I did just notice, we just took that ignition waveform, it was on AC coupling. So if we go to channel two, we can see there the AC coupling. I just noticed the little AC sign next to the voltage scale. So I was just gonna point out that we were on 100 millivolt scale there. So it's a very low voltage. Okay, now let's hook it up to canvas and see how it deals with that. This one here should be can high. So I'll put channel one on can high and channel two on can low okay so we're in all right so we've got something there already the voltage scales are way off remembering that um, we're on 50 volt scale look for channel one so let's just reduce the scale the voltage scale it's five volts a bit too much we'll go on the 10 volt scale press channel one channel two again we'll switch it to the channel two settings and then we want to uh, we want to go up on the voltage scale, that's all the way down. I'd say that's the one bit of feedback for this scope is the, the settings are a little bit fiddly. So that's on 10 volts, however, it doesn't look like the same as this one at the minute. Let's go to, uh, we had to turn it off AC coupling, didn't we? So it doesn't seem to be picking up channel two at the minute, it's probably something I've done. So let's just, um, Let's just move the vertical position of that one down and we'll go to channel one and move that one up. And then channel one, we'll move that one up. Okay, so we've got can high on the top, can low on the bottom. 
Um, let's just stop it there a minute. So it is doing something, look. Um, let's just put a trigger on there as well. So if we go to trigger, uh, we want to source to channel one. Let's just move that up into the waveform. So we can see the waveform now. So it is picking it up. Just not sure what's going on with channel two there. Okay, I know what I've done. I can see it now. So if we go to here, look, if we go to channel one, channel one's on a 10x probe. Okay, so if we just put that to a times one, Ah, now it's gone to a one volt scale. So if we go back to channel one again, we want to put that to, yeah, so we need them both on a one volt scale. So if we go to channel two and then vertical scale, we want to bring that down the same. Yeah, we are, we're getting there. And horizontal, so, uh, what we want to do is go to channel 2, bring that down, okay there we are, I knew we would get there, that is kind of just me learning this oscilloscope as well, it's a, it's a little bit tricky with the settings but kind of you, you kind of do get there. Now what we can see is it has picked up canvas, let's just um, bring that time base down to see how much detail we can see okay now that I don't know if you can see that but that looks quite messy if we stop it quick update on the canvas uh, display issue I was literally about to publish this edited video and I got an email in from David who heard I'd mentioned about this uh, canvas image issue with the O1 on one of our live sessions. So let me show you what he sent, it, it's really good. So the fix is really simple. Um, you can see there that we've still got this can image. If you press the horizontal, we get another menu. So can you see there F4, this is what it comes up by default. Press it again, it shows menu two. We've got the refresh, it's on high. What we wanna do is put that on low refresh and then we get a much, much better canvas signal. I did have a inkling that it was something to do with the screen and I'm guessing that that refresh is about the refresh rate of the screen. Um, so that's fixed that. Just in the nick of time there, David, thank you. So all in all, I'd say that the oscilloscope itself is pretty good for doing like quick checks and things like that. Um, however, if you wanted to do some in-depth diagnostics, then it's definitely worth making sure that you've still got your kind of <laughs> PC-based oscilloscope ready to go when you need it. What do you think? Let me know down below.